Most of my mornings, I wake up about 3.45 and I'm on the farm by about 4.30. Uh, we usually start taking a look at any of our hospital cows or any cows that are ill. Uh, we go from there to our maternity ward, check on cows that are calving or uh, in, you know, late, in what we call a transition period, getting ready to calve. And then the next place we hit is usually our fresh cows. Yeah, every day varies. Every day you kind of have a game plan, but every day when you work with livestock uh, can be different in our long days. We usually don't finish until 5, 6 o'clock in the evening. Uh, our farm uh, is split into two facilities, even though it's one large facility. Uh, we split it. We have two milk parlors. We have all our second lactation and older cows on our south facility and we have our first lactation animals on our north facility. Uh, we're currently milking around 4,600 cows. Uh, the total animal inventory because we have a large heifer ranch uh, is around 16,000 head of cattle total. Unfortunately, cows and livestock can't tell us how they feel. So when we have to, uh, when we want to tell the animal's temperature, if we want to find out if she's pregnant, if we want to find out if she's ruminating properly, uh, we unfortunately have to uh, put a sleeve on and uh, put some lubricant on the sleeve. And the cows are usually locked up in the stanchions. And we'll go down and identify the cows that we need to check and uh, slip our hands up into their room. But yeah, we can usually, because I do it every day, uh, we can usually tell the animal's temperature within a, a tenth to two tenths of a degree. A lot of people can't believe that, but when you arm as many cows as you have, and we know, because we also run uh, thermometers, we know what we're feeling. Uh, we can, or some people, veterinarians, some people like myself that arm a lot of cows and do preg checking, uh, we can usually determine whether a cow is pregnant or not within about 35 days of conception, based on what we're feeling inside and over. So. The reason the, the calf is yellow is because the calf has actually had a bowel movement inside the sack. Here when we needed water, um, because the water tables have dropped so dramatically over the last couple years, uh, in our, in Tulare County, a lot of the wells have gone dry, including ours. Uh, we had four wells go dry on our facility. Uh, we had to stretch out our watering between wells when we were pumping, so our feed quality, our corn silage won't be as good this year. Our corn silage wasn't as good that we, were, that we fed this past year. Uh, we had to bring more feed in at higher costs to add to our production costs. Um, sorry about that. Um, to drill new wells is extremely costly, and again, to discuss the drought for the Central Valley or even for ourselves is longer than takes longer than an interview that I can have with you. Um, we've had to take wells down to a thousand feet at the cost of two hundred and fifty dollars a foot, and it's extremely costly. So when people talk about you know water woes and uh, how it affects you. It affects your pocketbook terribly, but we have no other resources to pull feed from. It would cost so much to ship feed across the United States. And we have whole communities here in the Central Valley that uh, have lost all water. Uh, the towns haven't just dried up from water, but the people have lost jobs. Uh, people have had, people that have lived in their homes for 40 years have had to leave their homes. Um, 
if the dairies have to close or move because of lack of water, which could very easily happen, uh, a lot of people will lose their jobs. Our facility employs over 80 employees. If we had to, if we had to leave, 80 guys would be out of a job.